so I'm going to open up the action editor. You'll notice Ratchet X goes into development mode and shows the pause indicator. I'm going to maximize the action editor and choose file new. This brings me to um, our action templates. To get a leg up, we start the creation of an action by, by opening one of our action templates. We have a different template uh, for each of the start by scenarios or the start by methods that we support. So for example, if I were to build an action that would be started by the user dragging and dropping a file and dropping it on my action in Ratchet X Commander, then I'd choose the start by file drop template. Or if I wanted to have an action that the user would just right click and choose execute, um, I would use the start by user template. But in this case, we want to build an action that will be started by the user clicking the magic button when it appears on either the pump people tab or company tab, and then selecting our action from that list. So there's two ways that that can happen. Um, one is to specifically build an action that the action itself specifies what reg win or reg wins it will be um, associated with. And the second is to be more abstract and more generic and to build an action that is not associated with any specific reg win, but instead is associated with a specific X model. Now, when we built our app space, if you recall, we went to the trouble of mapping our people tab and our company tab um, to the address verification X model. So this is the choice we're going to want to do. It allows us to create an action that is much more generic and could essentially be, um, uh, be associated with other app spaces in the future without ever having to change our action code itself. So I'm going to double click on start by button on mapping found. Okay, so we're brought into the Ratchet X code editor. And as you can see, it uh, looks, if you're familiar with Visual uh, C Sharp, it is a C Sharp application. Um, the editor itself is very uh, consistent with what you've probably seen. And I'm going to open up all of the regions, exposing all of the various bits of code. By default, this is what we're presented with. So before we start, let's just talk about what is a Ratchet X action from a programming point of view? To a programmer, an action is simply derived, it's a class that's derived from action runtime. But it also has to have start by methods. Now, the start by methods are, are, are um, established by within this class implementing certain interfaces that we provide. So for each of our start by methods, like I start by file drop, or I start by test, or I start by a button on mapping found, we have an interface that we publish for each of those. And you need to, if you want to implement an action that will be started by any of those mechanisms, you have to implement that interface. Okay? So here's our class. Let's start off by giving this an appropriate namespace. Now, you'd probably use the namespace of your company or your project or whatever it might be. I'll just use Ratchet X and Tab. Now, I'm going to give a name to my class. I'm going to call this Address uh, Verification Action. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to quickly do some copy and pasting so you don't have to sit here and watch me mistype everything. Grab all of this. Delete it. Shift insert. Okay, so I've just essentially provided values for the caption property. This is the value that the user will see in Ratchet X Commander as the caption associated with this action. Then there's a, a, a broader, more uh, textual description. This could be as big as you want. A publisher name. The maximum time to execute is, it's just fail safe. Um, the Ratchet X action is run in a managed environment. And you get to describe what is the failsafe that if this action is still running after a certain period of time, uh, you need to kill it because it must be running, um, must have kind of run off the tracks. 
Um, in this case, I know this action is going to be quick, done quickly, so I've set it to 30 seconds. Um, and then I've got a couple of other options, like hide the action window, which I'm setting to true. I don't want to display an action window associated with running of this action. And skipping action sounds, I'm going to say false, uh, because I like that little ding that occurs at the end. Okay. Now, let's move down to our first interface implementation. Start by test is the method that you have to implement when you're running the I start by test interface. Okay? Now, what I like to do to get started with my action is I like to build the simplest possible action first. Absolute simple. And then just get that, go full, full circle with that, get that action into Commander, see it run, and then start beefing it up and putting in the actual functionality after the fact. So instead of diving right into the, to the actual code that will be my action, I'm going to start by just putting some simple things in here. My start by test interface, I'm just going to change so that it calls main script and passes in null. Now, you can structure your code any way you're comfortable. What we have generally done, and it's one of our coding practices, is our interfaces all call some method called main script. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to have a single place that all of our, all of our common code starts. Regardless of what, what interface uh, was called, um, everything sets up whatever it has to set up that's specific and unique to that interface. And then um, everything kind of eventually funnels through the main script method. But you could, do it, you could, uh, you could write your code any way you're comfortable. So in this case, the start by test interface is what will be called when I click the compile button, get a clean compile, and then say run from the action editor. Then we're just in test mode, and um, that, this is the interface that will be called in that scenario. Uh, the interface we're more interested in is the start by button on mapping found. Uh, this interface is the interface that will be called when the magic button is clicked, our ratchet, our um, action is displayed there, a little caption is displayed, and the user clicks and says, yes, I want to run that action. This is the interface that will be called. This method will start us off. You'll notice the region here for start by button on mapping found interface includes the start by button on mapping found method, and it includes a couple of other things, including a required mappings. Well, this is essentially uh, how RatchetX is able to associate your action with a specific mapping that it finds in any one of its app spaces or regwins. So what you have to do is you have to put the URL here, that is the URL to your X model. Then there's also a method that you can implement if you like, um, which is called configure button. This gives you some ability to um, actually have a little more control over what's displayed in the magic button. Um, uh, for example, if you want your caption to read something other than your standard caption, uh, you could assemble that here. If you want to, um, if you want to uh, include an icon uh, and change the way the icon appears, or if you want to just say have a rule in here as to whether your magic button is displayed at all. In some cases, you want to check and make sure that um, a certain condition is true before displaying your action or advertising your action because it may turn out that you know without a valid value it doesn't make sense to run your action so you can do all that here in the configure bu button method that is part of the I start by button on mapping found interface so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the required mappings and I'm going to grab it from over here so I get the right one, and I'll paste it back here. Okay, so in the required mappings, we have now included, remember, you can it can be multiples. It is a string array. Uh, we're only, this action is only um, worried about one specific X model, uh, the one that's found in the install folder in the samples subdirectory, given this name. Okay, that's the one that we mapped prior. And then configure button, we can just leave as is for now. It's not hurting anything. 
And then let's go down and take a look at main script. In main script, you want to just insert one thing. For those of you familiar with Kernighan and Ritchie's great book from the uh, 70s on C programming, we're going to implement the uh, hello world message. So basically all this action is going to do at this point, it's got all the wiring that it needs so that it can be run right here uh, from the action editor and so that, can, so that it can be loaded up into Commander and that it will advertise itself as an action that can be run for the addresses on both the people and the company tab. First, let me see if this compiles clean. Okay, so we've compiled fine. Let's try running it from here. Now, as I said, when I click Execute, it will our starting off point will be the start by test method. That will receive the co action context object. Now, this is critical. Um, the action context object is always started to whatever uh, is always passed in to whatever the start by method is, and it is. I guess it's an example of the um, of the uh, injection pattern, the service injection pattern, because this context object provides all the functionality and access that you need in a RatchetX action. So you'll use it to query, uh, extract data from the screen, or query the availability of regwins, or even provide some basic um, UI if you'd like. So when I click this execute button, the start by test method will be called, which will just simply call the main script, passing in the context, and uh, a null value for the mapping, which is the other value that's expected here. And then let's take a quick look at the main script method. It's going to receive a context and a mapping object, which in this case will be null. And all it will do is use the context object. Now you'll notice context has a number of very useful functions, some of which include prompters that we provide so that you have very simple ways of, of prompting the user for, for messages and the availability of regwins and things like that, choices. So all it's going to do is say prompt for message box, hello world. And then it's going to return uh, the action result. In this case, it's action result success. So let's try this. I've compiled. I'm going to click Execute. The first thing it's going to do is ask me if I want to give this a name and save it. I will do that. Action verification, address verification, that looks right. Address verification, okay, I'll choose Save. And then it runs. Well, it displays a little prompter that says, Hello World. I click Continue. It dings. And we're done. Our action has just been run successfully here in test mode. Now I'm going to make sure it's saved. I'm going to shut down the action editor and I want to register this now within RatchetX Commander. I'm going to right click and choose Add Action. I'm going to browse my file system. I saved this as address verification.action on my desktop. Choose OK. And now our action is loaded up in Commander. RatchetX Commander is aware of this action. And if I take a look at it by right-clicking and looking at details, you'll see some of the information that RatchetX knows about it, including that it's got a start-by method of button-on-mapping-found, and this is the X model it's looking for. Well, I should be able to go to my address, right-click on the tutorial app space, look at its details, and you should notice that it, too, is making reference to the same X model. Well, that's the linkage that RatchetX needs to know so that RatchetX can advertise this action on the magic button so that the end user can ultimately choose to click it and launch that action. So, now that I'm on the People tab, if I click the magic button, you'll see that the address verification action is now being advertised here. If I go to the Company tab, you'll see it's also being advertised there. Okay, So RatchetX has successfully made that linkage or that connection by virtue of the app space and the action both, contain, both uh, uh, mapped, if you will, to the same X model. So let me run it here in the company tab. I'll run address verification and all I get is my simple hello world 
just as you'd expect. I click continue, and that's it. So my first step here was a baby step. All I've done is I have effectively created an action, and I have found a way to link that action to my desired app spaces in a roundabout way by virtue of mappings, not uh, not not uh, building an action that is specific to these regwins per se. Instead, it's specific in a more in a, it's uh, linked in a more generic way via the X model and the mapping. So let's go back and reload the action editor and actually put some more meat on these bones. Okay, so let's reopen our action. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, build an appropriate start by test method. You want to start by test method to essentially simulate the same state or as close as you can, the same state as your actual start by method, in this case as the start by button on mapping found. So what that means is start by button on mapping found will be passed a context and a mapping object, a mapping info object. Start by test needs to simulate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to grab a little bit of code and I'm going to paste it right in here. Okay. So let me step through what this is going to do. As I said, the action context is the root of all of the action. This is the main object that you use to have access to uh, regwins and app spaces and everything that RatchetX can do for you. So the context object has a get app space method. I'm going to pass into it a URL, and that URL actually points to our tutorial app space. So it's using the file colon slash slash as a, uh, to indicate that it's on the local file system. So this will return, assuming that file is found, this will return an app space info object. I'm going to use that app space info object, call its get regwin method, and pass in the people tab as a string. That's the ID of the regwin I'm looking for, and that will return regwin. And then I'm going to use that regwin, and I'm going to call its get mapping by URI method, and I'm going to pass in the URI for our X model. This is the X model that we had mapped uh, within both People tab and Company tab. This will return to me a valid mapping info object, specifically the, the mapping for the People tab of the tutorial app space. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the context object. I'm going to, I'm going to call its prompt for regwin method. This is a very useful method. Um, you pass in a regwin info object, and prompt for regwin checks to see if that object is currently not loaded. If it's currently not loaded, it will prompt the user to load it using um, this caption. Um, it will then, once the once uh, the user has loaded my CRM, it will confirm that, and the user can click a continue button, and it will return. So what that means is you can guarantee that when prompt for regwin is called. Uh, the, when it returns, that regwin will guarantee to be found, or the, user, the only other choice the user has is to cancel the action. So the action could abort. Those are the only two conditions. So when we get here, we're going to call main script, passing in the context, which we've been provided in our start by test uh, method, and this mapping object, which we have uh, simulated the selection of here. Okay, so let's just see this work. Let me compile it, make sure it looks right. I'm going to run it, and okay, so what we see here is the context.prompt for regwin has determined that the people tab is not currently selected, so that regwin is not found, so it's prompting me to load it using the caption we provided. When I click on the people tab, you'll notice now that RatchetX realizes the people tab is currently selected, so it makes the continue link available. Once again, if I'm on a different tab, it's not available. So if I click Continue, 
I now get the message, uh, hello world, which is all that our main script does for the moment. I'm going to click continue. I get the ding and I'm done. Okay, so now we've got both the start by test method and the start by button on mapping found method. Both of those are calling the main script appropriately. So now let's focus our attention on the main script. In simplest terms, what this action is going to do is it's going to extract data from the um, mapping that's provided. In this case, that mapping will actually be pointing to snippets in either the people tab or the company tab. And it will take that data, pass it to some web service, um, which will manipulate it in some way, and then provide some user interface so that the user can see that data, and then optionally paste data back to, the, um, to those fields. Now, we don't want to jump right into that. What I'd like to do is demonstrate a simpler main script, which I'm going to show you now, that really just highlights those RatchetX primitives. So this little bit of code here is going to do basically what I just described. Let me uh, show it to you. Well, the main script always starts with a valid context object, and in this case, a mapping object. We're going to use the mapping object. We're going to call its get element method, passing in ADD line 1, which is the ID of our X model element. That will return a mapping element info object, which has an extract method. The extract method will extract the data from the snippet associated with this mapping element. We're going to do the same thing for all of the elements we're looking for. Address line 1, 2, city, state, and zip. And we are extracting the data from that screen into these local variables. Then we're going to use one of our built-in um, prompters. In this case, it is prompt for show text, which is uh, offered in the context object. And this is going to prompt the user for some, it's going to provide a little bit of text for the user to read. Um, and then it gives us some ability to set a heading and, and turn off editing so they can't edit it and set the overall height and width. We're actually also going to put in a, um, a couple of buttons. Button 1 is going to say paste new address. And button 2 will say cancel. So we start here by defining our, our show text definition object, which sets all this up for us. You'll notice here in the, in the constructor for this object, I'm passing in the actual text, which is uh, including uh, these variables of line 1, 2, city, state, and zip. From up here, they're all being passed in. So I'm going to prompt the user and show them the values that we've just extracted in this case. And then if the user selects uh, paste new address, I'm going to paste data back into the MyCRM screen. And I'm doing so using the mapping object again, the get element method, passing in the element ID I'm looking for. And that returns a mapping element info object, which has a paste method. And all I'm going to paste back is the same value, but forced into uppercase. Now, I'm doing that just to simulate some type of change in the value. For the moment, I don't want to really focus on any of the specifics of address standardization. I just want to simulate it here. So this is a very simple main script, and it should basically show uh, everything that we want to show in a very primitive form, in a very simple user interface. And let me show you that now, see if this compiles properly. It does. And let's run this. OK. This is the show text, uh, the show text prompter. You'll see it's got the values that it's read from the screen. So those extracts have happened and pulled this data out of the screen. And I've got a couple of buttons. If I choose paste new address, you'll see these values forced into uppercase and pasted back to the screen. Let's take a look at that. You hear the ding, our action is done, and we're back into our action. Okay, So that's a very, very simple implementation of this. So in our final step, uh, what we'd like to do is build a more substantial user interface. Now to do so, we're going to use a traditional development tool, Visual Studio, and we're going to create an external user control 
that is a .NET assembly. And that .NET assembly, we will be able to leverage here in our action. We are, we're able to embed that file in our action and essentially uh, compile here against it and it will become part of our action as uh, one individual XML file. It will, um, that assembly will be serialized into the action XML and therefore carried with it. So there's no distribution problems or registry problems. All you have to do is, uh, is embed it in your action and I'll show you how to do that. Let me first switch over here and take a look at my development machine. Now here I have Visual Studio and um, I have built a user control. If I click here and show you the source code. You can see that we have address verification control which uh, is a user control. Now we've drag and dropped here and created our nice little um, user interface with some links and essentially what we're doing is here we're creating a user interface layer that if it needs to do any Ratchet X specific things it will raise an event. So I have a highlight link and a paste link and both of those are Ratchet X specific. So if we look at that code all it's doing is calling a highlight requested event which that event will be subscribed to by the action code and then the action itself can then perform that function. So in this case the action can highlight the mapping or the action can paste or handle any of those uh, features. The other thing that we're doing in this specific case is this user control is burying all the specific information that's needed to call the verify services web service. So here we have I've used the um, I've used the the WSDL tool that Visual Studio provides um, to automatically generate a class that wraps the web service uh, provided by um, qualifiedaddress.com. So this code is all just system generated that wraps that web service. And all of that's going to be buried into this user control. So for the purposes of understanding Ratchet X, it's not very important that we describe all the ins and outs of calling a web service and all the ins and outs of um, of that, this specific web service and what's involved in that. Though if you're interested, the source code for this is available. It's part of the action itself. Uh, you'll see if you go to the actions embedded files list, it's it's actually there. So you can get access to all of this source code, compile it yourself, and see what's going on. But for the purposes of uh, today's tutorial, I'm just going to compile this and take that DLL and include it as part of my action. Okay, back to my tutorial machine. Uh, I'm going to choose File, Embedded Files, and you'll see we have a dialog box that allows us to add files. I'm going to click Add, and I have my RatchetX.AddressVerification.dll. This is the .NET assembly created on my other machine in Visual Studio. I'm going to double click this and you'll see it's listed here as embedded files. When I click OK, that file will be serialized and made actual part of the XML that is this action. Okay, that's it. Now, you can add or you can embed any file, any file type that you're interested in, um, in your action and then using the context object you can get that embedded file or you, you can get a file stream and you can do whatever you want with it. So if you need other files for any purpose that your action might have, you can embed them here, and then those two will be uh, serialized into XML and made available to you at runtime. But if you include a .NET assembly, there's a little extra that it does. We actually make that .NET assembly available for you at compile time. So all you have to do is, I guess, the first step I'm going to grab a little snippet here. The first step is you need to put in a using uh, statement letting the compiler know that you're going to be using this namespace as part of the embedded assembly. So let me click compile and we're good. So RatchetX now knows that we have an onboard assembly 
and that onboard assembly is this namespace. So once we've done that, we've done everything we need to um, support the use of that. So now we can instantiate one of those user controls and actually use it here in our, our action. All right, so let me go down here and let me put in the real main script and step you through uh, the final product. Doing a little block and copy. Let me get you back to the top here. Okay. This is the actual main script uh, for the finished product. Let me step you through this. The first thing we do is we instantiate an, an instance of the address verification control. We're calling it control. And then we are instantiate, we're instantiating an object within that control called address, and that's just something we use to pass values back and forth. And we are making a local copy of the context and mapping object just for the purpose of uh, ease of access and various methods. And then here we go. We're using the mapping object. Now remember, the mapping object at this point, our main script is unaware of the specific regwin or app space that it's working with. But if we want to be able to reference that regwin, the mapping object has a get regwin method, which returns the reg regwin info object. By turning on the regwin info object's active scanning property, we actually tell Ratchet X to alert us by, ver by uh, virtue of an event if that regwin is actually lost or found, if any, if any change happens in the found status of that regwin. So what we're doing here is we're wiring up uh, to its active scanning availability changed event. We're wiring up our own handler. And then we're registering for a couple of the, of the specific events that that control offers. So when, when uh, the user clicks the paste link, um, the paste requested handler will be called. When the user clicks the highlight link, the highlight requested, uh, requested handler will be called. And when the user, uh, I guess when the control initializes, it will fire off an event asking for the address that needs to be standardized. And we've got handlers for all of those. Then finally, we're using the context objects prompt for custom method and we're passing in our user control. Um, now by doing so, we are essentially using the RatchetX prompter, which will slide up in the lower um, right corner and will house our user control. But the rest of the governance that RatchetX is doing on making sure that the user, that there might be a, um, we might have a parking pause in effect where the user's mouse and keyboard uh, are restricted in some way so they can't, they can't click on anything else. All of that will be automatically maintained. So this will actually slide up our custom control, make it available, and all the events will fire and the events will call these handlers. Now, as you can see, uh, the address requested handler is doing pretty much the same thing we showed before, where it's calling the mapping objects get element and calling an extract. That's where that's happening. Um, the paste requested handler is doing what we saw before, where the same elements are being, objects are being um, created and the paste method is being called, and we're passing in the new values. Highlight request handler is using the context object and passing in the highlight, calling the highlight method, and passing in the mapping object's bounding rectangle. Every mapping object has a bounding rectangle, which means essentially the uh, rectangle that, if created, um, the rectangle that would surround all of the fields that are mapped in that mapping object. It's passing in the color green, it's passing in uh, a timeout, so if the user doesn't click anywhere, uh, it will time out after a certain, certain number of uh, milliseconds. And then the uh, active scanning availability changed handler will be called if the regwin, whatever regwin it is, whether it be the people tab or the company tab or any other regwin that is, uh, has a mapping that, that corresponds, when that regwin is found or lost, this method will be called. And when this method is called, it's just calling the controls enabled property and setting it to the regwin's availability, meaning it will disable the control when the regwin is, is not available, and it'll re-enable it when the regwin is available. 
then there's some little supporting method here for something. But that's essentially it, okay? So, I think there's one more thing I have to do, which uh, I think I, my code might have required some additional, um, some additional using statements. Let me hit compile, and I compile clean, and that should be it. Let me show you how this works. Let me execute using the execute button, and let's see what happens. Sure enough, the user control that we've added is hosted here within this container, and the data that's returned from the web service is shown here. The green values are those values that have changed. And if I were to click highlight, the bounding rectangle will be displayed. If I'm to hit paste, these values will be pasted back to the target screen. And we're done. So that is, in essence, um, all that it takes to create the address verification demo. It includes um, a custom control, a .NET custom control that's embedded within it. And it is implemented using the I start by button on mapping found. So I could very easily now spin up any other app space that happens to have addresses in it. And I could map those address elements to our X model, which I think is here. As long as I map other app spaces to this um, X model, I will uh, be able to automatically run those as well. So my final step will be let me save this, make sure it's saved appropriately. I'm going to shut down the um, action. Ratchet X asks me if I want to reload. I will say yes. Okay, good. Uh, let me just reset my values. Um, there we go. Now we're back to the non-standardized address form. And let's check this in, in uh, action. There we go. There's our address verification action. Let me run it. There's our UI. And I'll click paste. And those values are pasted back and we're ready to go again. Let me bring up the company tab. And call the address verification action for the company tab. And now that address has been standardized. Let me click paste. And we're all done. So that is the address verification tutorial. And um, there will be many more tutorials coming. Uh, we will do deep dives into things like the advanced path editor and some of the other um, lesser known uh, um, tutorials that we have. Uh, but you should take a look at all of them. You can see all the tutorials. They are installed with our install uh, in the, it's generally the Wherever you install RatchetX, generally it's program files slash RatchetSoft slash RatchetX desktop integration. In that subdirectory, there's a uh, subdirectory called samples. And if you look in there, you'll see all of the actions and app spaces that we provide that are part of these samples set. And they're rich with information about how to build these. And I encourage you to take a look. Thanks for your time today, and I hope this was of value to you.